Hey, David McGuffin here. Welcome to Travel Talk Tuesday. Gosh, we are on the 15th of February, 2022. And uh, tonight, my topic is Krakow, Poland. Now, it's not very often I say this, but you are seeing my very first experience uh, of going to Krakow. Uh, I've never been there before, never been that far east. And uh, in December, we had an opportunity to visit Krakow, Charlotte and I, and uh, other places in Poland as well. As a matter of fact, we had about, uh, oh, I guess 10, 12 days or so to uh, travel throughout uh, Europe uh, on our own. And we spent five of those days in Poland that we enjoyed it so much. The people there are so very friendly. Uh, you, I cannot understand any of the language. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, it, I have forgotten what uh, hello and goodbye and thank you uh, are in Polish, but it doesn't really matter because the folks in Poland, if they are 40 years or younger, uh, everybody speaks English just as well as I do. And uh, so that helped me out as a tourist. But Krakow is a, uh, a very, very old city. Uh, dating back to the 11th century or so, at least. Uh, and uh, it is claimed to fame the way it, uh, you see it nowadays is it is um, done architecturally just like the Habsburg Empire because it was part of the Habsburg Empire. So the architectural style that you see in Vienna and uh you know, in, uh, in Budapest and uh, other areas like that are the same architectural style that you will see in Krakow. Because until World War I, the beginning of World War I, it was a, a part of that Austro-Hungarian empire. And uh, so Charlotte and I showed up there and we enjoyed it very much. Uh, at the time we visited in December, it was, uh, completely dark around 4.30 in the afternoon. And uh, so we essentially had arrived in town at our hotel, checked in. I had driven from uh, the concentration camp area of Auschwitz. So about a three hour drive, uh, we arrived, it was already dark. I looked out the window of our hotel and we were hungry and we went and had dinner. And then the next day we spent the entire day, Charlotte said I walked her feet off, but uh, I'd never seen the town, so I had to get around and see everything in a period of six hours when we had daylight. So we started pretty early. So the video that you're gonna see here uh, is kind of sparse of people because we started around nine in the morning when vendors were just setting up, uh, when there were, there were Christmas markets there and everything, and uh, when everything in the commerce was just getting going. And by the time we walked back from the castle later that afternoon around three, uh, the whole place was bustling with activity, but we were too tired to do any more filming. Uh, but I just want you to know that uh, there's a lot going on in Krakow, so you'll enjoy that. So let me share my screen here. Krakow, as you can see, is in Poland. It's very far to the east as far as my routes are going. This is a route that I have on our uh, Best of Eastern Europe tour. And here I am. Hey, David McGuffin here. Krakow. Welcome to Travel Talk Tuesday from Krakow, Poland. I hope you enjoy this look around. We're here at the main square, St. Mary's Church right here behind me. And I hope you enjoy this look around tonight of Krakow. We're here in the dead of winter. I understand that it is just as beautiful, if not even more so in the summertime with clear blue skies, green grass and green trees. But uh, we're gonna make the most of it. It's a festive Christmas spirit here. So we'll, I hope you enjoy this look around. Uh, we'll be back with you at the end of the show, but thanks for watching Travel Talk Tuesday from Krakow, Poland. Hey, David McGuffin here. Welcome to Krakow, Poland. We're here on a kind of a dreary day in December. Uh, no blue sky, but no rain either. And I think we're gonna have a great day to look around and discover this city of Krakow together. This uh, structure here behind me is part of uh, one of the city gates. It's called the Barbican. And it was built uh, around the main city gate entering to the town. In 1241, Krakow was attacked by uh, some uh, raiders and some vandals from the north and east 
and the city was raised and they built it back after 1241 and this is one of the structures they built along with a moat and a city wall all the way around the city. So this is the Barbican, the main defense, the main entry gate into this ancient city of Krakow. This is Charlotte. Uh, we're walking into the ancient city gate known as the Florian Gate, which leads to the Florian Ska Street. Again, keep in mind the shops are just opening. It's early in the morning. It was dreary all day long. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were only about a, a week before Christmas and the city workers were just putting up the Christmas decorations across this the street. This is the main square of Krakow. You can see we're here at Christmas time, so there's some markets here. This is the main square of Krakow, downtown, and this uh, building is known as the Cloth Hall, a big exhibit hall where vendors back in the day would come and sell their wares, and it's still used for that even today. You can see that uh, there is a Christmas market set up here on the main square. And of course that happens at Christmas time. And then from what I'm told, there's also a market very similar set up at Easter time. So in Poland, I'll give you a COVID-19 and travel restriction update. Uh, there were no uh, rules at all where anywhere we visited in Poland. Uh, if we were outside, uh, no mask were required. If you were inside, uh, you wore a mask to check in just in, to show that you were vaccinated and then you didn't have to wear a mask in hotels or restaurants or malls or anything else like that. Um, and this was one of the few places that we visited during the month of December that actually had uh, live and active Christmas markets. We were very disappointed at other parts of Europe, for example, in Prague that uh, had no markets. But uh, here, these guys, as you'll see, we're just opening for the morning. Or strong carriages um, here like I said, in the afternoon, the tree, and it was bustling with activity. Church, which there's been a church on this plot of land for 800 years. The first church was destroyed in 1241 when those ancient Tater invaders, invaders came and destroyed the city of Krakow. And then after that time, the folks in Krakow developed a brand new street plan laid out on uh, axis uh, with straight streets running parallel and perpendicular to each other. This was a local school route. We encountered those a lot of places in Europe in December. They were evidently going on a field trip uh, just before their Christmas holidays began which for them would be the 24th of December. These are much more substantial uh, kiosks than you would see, uh, say in Germany, maybe in Rothenburg or uh, Salzburg in Austria. Look at that pig's head, all kind of sausage and meat there. That school group kept coming along. They had just visited a candy shop and everybody had a piece of candy. This, I keep going back to this cloth hall. It's uh, pretty amazing. This, there are some kiosks outside the cloth hall. You can see that this so is Christmas a, markets abound here in Krakow's main square. It looks like they're all set up here. The uh, vendors who are selling uh, food are way and drinks and everything are down on the far end of the square. And the vendors who are selling merchandise and their wares are on this end of the square. And it looks like there's plenty of them here. It's uh, only about 11 o'clock in the morning, so not too many people out. 
and it's not so much concern. I don't either uh, even think about COVID-19 because uh, you know, we're not required to wear a mask here. You don't have to show ID to come in or a vaccination card or anything. Uh, so it looks like the polls here are really into the Christmas spirit and uh, adopting and adapting to the COVID-19 uh, and just having it become part of their lives as opposed to being afraid of it. Let's take a look around the Christmas market. You notice the square actually is a big rectangle and there were many streets leading into the square and almost on every corner, uh, a gentleman or a lady would approach us because I suppose we look like tourists and uh, ask if we would like a golf cart tour of the city center for a very, very cheap price, like 10 euro or something, $12. And um, we turned them all down and then uh, uh, only because I felt the need to walk around and see everything. But uh, if you were so inclined, you could probably hire them for an hour or two very inexpensively and they would take you everywhere because we saw them. Obviously they could not come into the main square there, the old town square, but we saw them up on the hill of the castle and uh, across the river, across the bridge and everything and down at this dragon I'm going to show you. So uh, if you're so inclined and you don't wanna walk all over the place, that is a good value if you uh, ever go to Krakow. It wasn't freezing here, but it was a chill in the air and probably in the low 30, I mean the low 40s, but it was damp. Okay, I'll tell you the story about this in a moment, but listen carefully. The window opens. And it, maybe you, you can see that's the guy with the trumpet sticking out the window, playing a tune. Explanation to follow. It said that this uh, tower here, they, at every hour, this trumpeter comes out and toots a little tune that resembles the tune that was played when uh, the Krakowians noticed the invaders were coming in 1241. And the trumpeter was playing this tune out this window and in mid-tune, an arrow hit him in the throat and killed him. And so this is why the tune has no resolution. This tower was a part of a church. The church is dilapidated and fallen down. The tower still remains. Again, the cloth hall, because I just keep going back to this because it dominated the whole piazza, the whole square. So finally we get to go inside. So these vendors are packed into these little kiosks. I suppose they rent this them. This is the interior of the cloth hall. Uh, this version of it was built in 1555 when the previous wooden version burnt down. And it was built in the Renaissance style. And it was commissioned by the king at the time, uh, Sigismund 
the Old, I think was his name. And uh, ever since, vendors have been selling their wares here. It's de uh, decorated in the Christmas spirit now, but they do have traditional handmade gifts and crafts from Poland all year long. One more look at the square, and we're gonna take off walking uh, down another street in the direction of uh, a couple of churches and the castle. This is about when someone walked up to me and asked me for the 50th time if we wanted a golf cart. Now those buggies are all over the place and they can come into the square, but it's a bit more pricey. But probably more classy as well. So this church is uh, the home church to the former Pope. Oh. I'm gonna mess up because I can't remember the Pope's name from Poland. The John Paul the. That's not it. I'm sorry, my Catholic uh, history is not so great. Someone maybe can correct me. This is Wawel Hill and Wawel Castle. Notice it's spelled Wawel, but in the, dia Czech, in the Polish dialect, Czech dialect, German dialect, W's are pronounced as a V. So Wawel Hill, Wawel Castle. This is inside the castle complex. You can see it's quite impressive and it's really well fortified as well. Uh, back in the day when it was had to be defended, all those upper areas would have had uh, fortifications. Now this dragon, I'm gonna have to stop and tell you the story about this dragon. So this dragon, I, we're standing up on the promenade of the castle, looking down to the river. And underneath the castle is a cave. And rumor has it, or legend has it, that when the city of Krakow was, or the area where the castle was going to be placed was discovered, there was a dragon who lived in that cave. And what, what happened was they went ahead and built the castle up above the cave, and, uh, but they knew there was a dragon living there. And in order to appease the dragon, the citizens of Krakow had to uh, feed the dragon uh, a cow or a sheep or a goat every day so that he would not rummage through the city and eat, they say, virgins. Now, how a dragon can know who a virgin is, I don't know, but that's how the legend goes. <laughs> but uh, so what happened was they wanted to get rid of this dragon, but they had to keep giving him these offerings of sheep and goat and cows. So a local shoemaker had this idea. So he took a, uh, a carcass and the skins of a dead goat and he formed it into looking like a live goat and inside he put sulfur and tar and stuffed it and placed it there by the entrance to the cave and the dragon came out and ate it. And then after he ate it, he uh, had a little heartburn and began to breathe fire more and more. And he walked over to the river, the dragon did, and drank some water, which further bloated his stomach up. And the sulfur would not go away. All it did is fortify itself inside the dragon's belly. And finally, the dragon exploded and he was dead. And the local shoemaker was heralded as a hero and he lives in infamy. So this dragon is down here and every 20 minutes or so, it emits a little flame. And I stood there for my video was like five minutes. And I finally caught the flame. So let me let it run. I don't know how well you can see it, but here's the flame coming out of the dragon's mouth. There it is, you see it? It lasts all of about five seconds. But people, 
come to Krakow to see this dragon. Here's a fortification. The cave is just down below there. And this is the river, Vistula River, that flows through Krakow. You can see it's a pretty flat city except for this castle hill, the Wawel Hill. Uh, this mall was just across the uh, street from our hotel. You can see people walking around there. Some have masks, some don't. There's no requirements. It's also connected to the train station, which connections all over Europe from there. But it rivals any big mall we would see, uh, I'm thinking like in, in Chicago or New York, uh, any three or four or five story malls that we, we have. This is down below. Notice KFC is all over Poland. Hey, we're finishing up our morning here in Krakow at the little church next to the castle. I hope you've enjoyed looking around this town. It is a great place, winter, spring, summer, or fall. This bell is tolling 12 noon, but it sure is uh, continuing on for a long time. I think people are gonna take a break for lunch pretty soon. So our adventure starts right here with David McGuffin's Exploring Europe from Krakow. See you later. So I wanna stop there just a second and do a little promo. Um, Charlotte and I are beginning our season of selling our tours all over the United States. And this coming weekend, we'll be in Chicago, February on Saturday and Sunday. And we'll be actually not in downtown Chicago. We'll be in the suburb of Rosemont, uh, very near the O'Hare Airport. And uh, we'll be uh, um, hopefully marketing and telling people about our tours. This is Charlotte Louise and I uh, a few years back. This is downtown Chicago. This is our exhibit that we put up and our, our famous little road sign that uh, I built. We always go somewhere. Morton's, Gibson's, uh, Harry Carey is to have a great meal in Chicago. Steak is great. The next weekend on the 26th and 27th, we are in Washington, D.C., right downtown at the uh, convention center. And uh, this is my friend Ed and Charlotte and I, uh, probably the last time we were there. That, Leslie, you were there too. When was that? In March, 2020. March of 2020. Just right. I mean, that was the last thing we did before COVID struck. And uh, so we were there. And uh, luckily, we finally get to go back to Washington, D.C. and promote our tours there. Um, I'll let this run out and then I'll come on full screen at the end. This is kind of the exhibit hall. I'm speaking at both of them, or all of the shows that we're at, and uh, talking about what's going on in the world with COVID-19 travel restrictions. Next week, we are visiting Zakopane, Poland. I've mentioned that the last few weeks, and Charlotte and I have fell in love with this place. This is on the road to Zakopane, and uh, we were just uh, kind of in a traffic jam because the road goes from six lanes to two. And so that's next week's show is Akapani, Poland. And I'll stop it here, come back uh, full screen. And uh, I, I, we're, we're sitting here, uh, or I've been sitting here the last few nights uh, with our little uh, tour catalog, getting them ready to uh, give out at the travel show. And uh, they have uh, all, this, this has all 23 tour routes. We do in it a little compilation and a synopsis of the tours and everything. Plus it tells a little bit about David McGuffin's Exploring Europe and how we do things a little bit different than everybody else does. Um, you know, the first page or two uh, has some information about what we do and how it's different from anybody else's tour. Now, probably all of you who are watching have traveled with me before. So you know how we do things a little bit differently, but uh, uh, you know, let me just cover the salient points. You know, I design all these tours. They are my tours. We, uh, I'm an educator and I'm a musician and I'm a tour guide. And I love to teach you about the destinations that we visit. Um, I try to get, arrange the tours that you don't have to worry about anything 
You can join one of our tours and not be stressed at all. All you got to do is show up and we'll take care of everything else and teach you how to experience Europe in a very, very different way. Uh, we uh, eat very well on our tours because as you saw those steaks at uh, that the particular place was Harry Carey's in Chicago. I love to eat and I love to wine and dine, dine and eat well. And so that's part of our experience as well. So half of our dinners are included on these tours, breakfast every day. Uh, we have local tour guides that join us and people that I've made relationships with for years that join us and give you a city tour from their perspective. So for example, uh, uh, you know, we've made the acquaintance of uh, several people in Krakow, uh, in Prague. We have these uh, group of uh, young ladies that uh, lead us around in, uh, in Prague and, and then all over Europe as well. Uh, we have small groups. Our tours are from six to 18 people, no larger. Most big tours uh, are anywhere from 50 people on a bus is basically what most big tour groups are. Some of them are a little bit smaller than that, around 25 to 30 or so, but we're six to 18 totally. Uh, we do some walking on the tours, and uh, but if you have to, you can always run a golf cart. <laughs> I kind of showed you about that too. So uh, we give you time to experience the locations on your own as well, because uh, our, our itineraries and agendas are basically, we arrive in a city one day, we do uh, orientation, uh, walk around the town, we have dinner together. The next morning we go see an attraction, a museum, a city tour, a go to you know whatever together as a group. And then uh, along about 11 or 12 o'clock, we give you the rest of the day and evening off to experience it on your own because we have already uh, kind of uh, educated you on the locale and we want to make you feel comfortable enjoying it on your own. Now, if you're here with a group, many people many people will like to hang out together. So sometimes we just say, okay, we're going to meet for drinks at five o'clock here. And if you want to go to dinner, we can go do that as well. Um, we Our prices are pretty competitive. We're not the cheapest place around, but uh, our prices uh, range anywhere from about $350 to $450 a day. And that's uh, pretty much the going rate. And we enjoy the places we stay. We play, stay in the city center. So you can walk out the door if we're in a city and you're right there. Uh, for example, here tonight in uh, Krakow, uh, we were two and a half blocks from that uh, barber and, and, and that city gate that I showed you. And uh, sometimes we stay in the countryside or in small little villages. You're also right there. So that's out the door as well. And then finally, uh, we are here to help you plan your trips, plan your pre-tours, uh, to uh, take care of everything and offer all the advice that you would need. So we would love to have you travel with us. Uh, look at uh, davidmcguffin.com and uh, just check out the tours that we have to offer. We got 23 routes all over Europe. We travel winter, spring, summer, and fall, and we'd love to have you travel with us. So with that said, Thank you for being with us tonight on Travel Talk Tuesday. Uh, we'll see you next week when I talk about Zakopane, Poland. Good night. <laughs>